when we were younger and playing, lived and breathed it, you know. I played it from being a little eight-year-old in just on green or in clay and in wood and they'd get a, if, if they didn't have a ball, they'd roll some old socks up and things like that and go playing near where I lived and play rugby. Roger Millwood was a true great. Although just five foot four inches tall and just over ten stone, he was a giant in the game. He played at off half for most of his career, moving to scrum half only in later years. Millwood was born in Castleford in September 1947, coming to prominence as a schoolboy starlet in the then ABC television Intertown Junior Games in the early 1960s. I was a class act, I like class act, I like class act. After making his first team debut as an amateur in October 1964, he signed for his hometown club on his 17th birthday for £200. Miracle player, miracle player, brilliant player, brilliant player, brilliant player, brilliant player. It was just a legend, what I did. It was just a legend, what I did. It was just a legend, what I did. I can remember when they played OKR in a, it was semi final, I think, for Wembley. It would replay down Castleford. I can remember going to watch him in that. These were early, early matches. In fact, they closed shops in Castleford for people to go, and at schools and everything, because it was a big thing. And they were just, they couldn't all get in the ground, so they were just knocking fences down and everything to get in, you know. I can always remember that game down there. Dodger, the Dodger, the brilliant, the Dodger, the brilliant, brilliant player. And he was so sensational playing on the wing, this young little strip of a lad. And it was so entertaining that I think that matches were focused not on Castleford but on him. Me viewing from afar was mesmerised by him in, in, in essence, this young lad, how, how super he was, you know, entertaining and had all the assets of being a future star. My first game we played in a friendly, and I forget whose, whose benefit it was. I think it was a dual benefit for a Castleford player and an Old Kingston player. And uh, it was a lousy day at, at the ground there. There was a lot of surface water, and I remember Roger pushing my head and face under the water and mud and said, Welcome to Rugby League. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. When they were playing matches, and at that time, it'd be green final that come out, and he'd have had a good game and it'd be on headlines and things like that and we'd go out and people would be going, oh, well done, Roger, and obviously you notice stuff like that, but to you, they're just, just Roger. Millwood was chosen for Great Britain at just 18 in March 1966. He was clearly too good not to be playing regular first-team football. And Rovers chairman, Wilf Spaven, asked his Castleford opposite number for a first refusal if ever they decided to sell. When he received the call in the summer of 1966, Spaven wasted no time. It was, without doubt, the best investment the club ever made. People used to say it was all the sixes. 1966, they paid £6,000 for a new Number six. Number six. He always said it's the well, the best thing he ever did because he, he loved it and he loved Hull and he loved all the people there and everything. So he never ever regretted it. He said it was the best thing that happened to him. Magic, magic, magic. Billwood made his Rovers debut at Hunslow on the 15th of August 1966 scoring his first try in his first home game, against Batley a week later. He scored 25 tries that first season, but the 
The following season's tally of 38 set a new season's record for a Loth half of rugby league, as well as making him the league's top try scorer. Two gentlemen on and off the pitch. With a total of 29 Great Britain and 17 England caps, Bill Wood enjoyed a glittering international career. And I was privileged um, in 1970 to take him to Australia um, on, on tour. And he just, you know, you thought you'd seen everything of him. And in the third test match, he, he was absolutely sensational. Scored a sensational try. When he went on that rugby field, he was somebody special. And here's Melwood again, on his way to equaling the Anglo-Australian points record in a test. But, um, it was a, a great tour, we won, the, we won the last two tests, and it was one of the major reasons that we were successful. Um, it was part of a group of guys who toured, and that's the last time we beat Australia uh, in, in a test series. And, and he was, he was a, one of the key instrumental players who enabled that to, to take place. Yeah, absolutely special player. In 1970, Millwood also took over the Rovers' captaincy, leading them to a Yorkshire Cup success the following year. After relegation in 1974, Millwood played a big part in the Yorkshire Cup success and promotion the following season, and a short summer spell with Cronulla in Australia followed in 1976. Well, he took Kay for a walk to the beach and I said, oh, did you like it, Kay? Was it, was it nice at the beach? She went, yes, but a little, little bit. She went, but I want to go home. Well, that set me off. I said, oh, and I want to go home. So there's Roger there with us both crying, wanting to go home. We'd only been there about four hours. But obviously, when we'd all had a sleep, and following morning, everything seemed a lot brighter, so uh, we had a great six months there. Loved every minute, and we were crying then because we had to come home. I've been watching 70 years, and the best player I've ever seen in my life. Then, when Harry Poole died so tragically in 1977, the Robins appointed Millward as player coach. In that role, he led them to floodlit trophy, first division championship and challenge cup successes before a fourth broken jaw in 12 months led to his retirement from playing. Fittingly, his last first team appearance was in the 1980 Wembley final when he achieved a career ambition of lifting the challenge cup. Roger Millward, on behalf of the lads and myself, I'd love to thank you for the fantastic support you gave us at the stadium. Thank you. Roger Millward holds up the cup that he played 17 years to win. And as a player on the field, he could see things that you couldn't see. But Roger, when Roger wanted that ball, he got it. The next thing you'd see either Clive Sullivan or Steve Hubbard or Phil Lowe flying through a gap. And you're thinking, I never saw that. After his retirement from playing, Millward continued as coach for a further 11 years, winning six more trophies to become the most successful coach in the club's history. Tactically, he was wonderful. I can think of many things where he, he showed us things and it, it happened in a game and he managed to play it. So he was a fantastic tactician. One of the first coaches to go to America. He went to Chicago Bulls, I think, to pick up on training methods and the psych psychological side and the nutrition and all that sort of stuff. Roger was the best coach that's ever coached me and I had some good coaches. He was like the Lionel Messi of, of today. 
When he bowed out at the end of the 1990-91 season, he had been with the club for an incredible 25 years. Awarded the MBE for his services to Rugby League in 1983, Millward was inducted into the Rugby League Hall of Fame in 2000, and Rovers named the main stand at Craven Park the Roger Millward stand in his honour. It was all okay, chaos, supporter. Always, 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 always. His strength and his courage that people talk about on the rugby league pitch is, is, is tenfold when he left rugby. Because when, 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 you, when you know what he went through, and he never ever, never ever talked about it, never talked about if he were in pain and what have you, right up to the point where he, uh, he, 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 he passed away. He, what, a, what a character, what courage, and you, you, unbelievable, really well. Only because when I was at junior school, um, I came home one day and asked my mum if my dad was famous, because somebody at school had said I got a famous dad and I didn't believe them, because to me he was just my dad. A true gentleman, on and off the pitch. 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 Yeah, we went to Buckingham Palace. He had got a chauffeur-driven car down to Buckingham Palace. Uh, the Queen gave him his MBE. So he's actually met the Queen and the Queen Mother because she presented him with the trophy at Wembley. Was and he is a legend and an inspiration in every sense of the word. 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 Sense of the, word. the road opening in Hull. Oh, we were so proud. It was quite emotional because when we unveiled the sign and it was red and white, it made it extra special because it was called the Rod Millward Way rather than just Millward Way. It was just really emotional and just amazing. As a fella, great bloke. As a father, great bloke. As a footballer, great bloke. As a friend, great bloke. Even when he was really poorly. He was my hero, simple as that. He was, he was my hero, he was a hero to thousands of others. He was the reason that I was first involved in rugby league, or a very big part of it, and the reason that I'm still involved in it. And, and, and I used to say to people, uh, if I'd have had a son, Roger Millward would have been my son. I was so proud of his achievements and, and what he became. What he did for Old Kingston Rovers and rugby league can only be equaled. He can't be surpassed because he was so good. He was one of the greatest, without any doubt. Could do everything, run, pass, tackle, brave as and come, only five feet four, uh, but remain so modest. A long, long way, but it's been very enjoyable, and uh, luckily through rugby league, I've been able to see the world. It's not been a bad life, has it, really? It's been a wonderful life. <laughs>